What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jason here with the Cow Park Bros. And of course, on behalf of my fellow host, Terrence, I just want to come to you and kind of say thank you for listening to us for all this time. And can you believe it's been almost one year, the Cow Park Bros? Yes. Our anniversary episode is coming up very fast. It'll be in April. So again, thank you for all that time. Thank you for listening. And in fact, for our anniversary show, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear messages from you, whether it be go to our website, send us an actual voice message, or go into our voicemail, send it that way, or just send us a message on social media. We want to hear from you. We want to know what your favorite part of the Cal Park Bros is, what you've enjoyed the most, what you haven't enjoyed, what you love the most, favorite segments, favorite moments, whatever it may be. We just want to hear from you. And whatever we receive, we're going to incorporate that into our anniversary episode and just enjoy the fact that, again, one year almost of the Cal Park Bros. And that wouldn't happen because of you guys. So thank you very much. And again, we want to hear from you. So again, make sure you go to calpartbros.com, click on the message little button there. That'll give you the option to send us a voice message, which we can, we can play on the show. Or you can go to 405-877-BROS, call us there, leave a voice message there as well. Again, also want to use that for the show. And again, also, if you want to hit us up on social media or send us an email to calpartbros at gmail.com, we'll take it that way as well. But make sure you get on that and do that so we can take get that done. We can hear your voice. We want to hear from you. All right. But always don't forget, when it comes to the Cal Park Bros, make sure you like us, love us, share us, and follow us. Because if you like us, why wouldn't you? Welcome back to Cal Park Bros. Jason and I are fresh off the segment discussing um, really the, the content of Between the Lines and whether or not Super Bowl was actually good. It was close, but I don't know if it was good. It was good at the end. I re- you were probably more likely to pay attention to commercials in the first quarter and the second quarter just because there wasn't a lot of action going on. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the second phase of the Super Bowl experience, which are the uh, commercials, uh, the Super Bowl ads. Now, I paid much more close attention to those ads in the first half, not so much in the second half, but there's definitely some, some differing opinions about whether or not they were good or not. And I definitely noticed some trends uh, within these commercials as well. So, Jason, Jason what were your thoughts? Uh, first off, before going to that, I do have to make a correction or an admission on my part. Uh, last segment, uh, Terrence mentioned Matt Hasselbeck being, in, being in, the, in the Super Bowl, and I said that I don't think he was there. Uh, like I told Terrence a second ago that when he said Hasselbeck, I was thinking about Matt Castle. So, so my bad, folks. I, I do recognize that Hasselback was actually in the Super Bowl, so my apologies. Okay, I was thinking of the wrong guy. But as far as the commercials go, I thought they were pretty much all trash. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, there are going to be some better than others, as, as there is every year. But I feel like when I go back, and of course, I, I found a good, um, a good uh, article on The Athletic kind of ranking the Super Bowl commercial for this year, best and worst. And when I was going through them all, I'm like, None of these Super Bowl commercials are going to be iconic. None of them. They're not going to be up there in the pantheon that is the greatest Super Bowl commercials of all time. But even looking back at the ones this year and taking them for a face value for what they are this year, none of them were really funny. I mean, all the ones that were attempting to be humorous, they weren't funny. Some of the products that they were promoting were obviously good products, but the commercials themselves weren't very entertaining. Or the ones that were supposed to be, you know, to get, get your emotions running, like the Budweiser commercial with the horse breaking his leg. I'm like, okay, this doesn't make me feel or anything. I mean, I'm not going to go out and buy some Bud just because of this commercial. You know? And that, That's because you're dead inside. <laughs> part right. because, yeah, I'm dead inside because of that commercial. So, so yeah, that commercial will kill me on the inside. So, um, But yeah, the, on the, obviously, opinions are going to vary, but they say the number one commercial, the best commercial for that uh for this year was the Dr. Evil GM commercial where they brought back all the good, the uh, Austin Powers characters and whatnot from the evil. Oh, yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, okay, they're older now. It, it's, yeah, so it just didn't really get me. Obviously, the Hellman's Mail commercial where Pete Davidson gets tackled. Is that really the best part? Because you see him get tackled, supposedly. Okay, that's not really funny. Or the Uber Eats ones where they're eating stuff that's not really food. Okay, we already know celebrities are stupid anyway, so that doesn't really point anything out. Now, number four, they say that was the Larry David commercial that you said was your favorite. I think you're probably kind of biased in that just because it's Larry David. 
and we know how much you love Curb Your Enthusiasm, apparently. I'm not sure where that came from, but, but yeah, just none of this stuff really did it for me. If, and when it comes to emotional commercials, the Robo Dog one, that might have been close, where he jumped off the roof and battery died, he just hit the curb, and yeah, okay. I just wasn't feeling it, bro. I wasn't feeling it. I mean, what, what were your thoughts, besides the Larry David one, which apparently you fell in love with? I'm sure you have it on your uh, phone and we can watch it all the time, apparently. Is that right? No, no. It's, listen, a couple trends that I know is, number one, hella e-car commercials, hella crypto commercials. <laughs> now, now we know Jason's stance on, on, on uh, investments in general. <laughs> He he considers it to to be too, far far too close to gambling. So, uh, but I do find it interesting that crypto is gone full tilt, and basically they're trying to throw as much fucking money at this thing as possible. Um, it kind of reminds me, and it harkens back to the the dot com uh, bubble when every commercial was a it was a dot com. Um, iteration. And so that was the trend. Now, ironically, the crypto commercial Larry David is, is in, it's trying to sell you crypto. But to me, I'm like, you're kind of selling Larry, Larry David to me right now. I don't give a fuck about crypto right now. And, and that's why it stands out. So um, <laughs> there was one crypto commercial where they literally just had a QR code on the screen, like a fucking arcade game. <laughs> And I thought, wow, just this is one way. <laughs> this is one way to spend a bajillion dollars, right? <laughs> um, shout out to everybody who actually tried to scan it, because apparently that site was down, like probably almost immediately, because a million people, you know, Super Bowl's arguably what most watched fucking event all year, and everybody and their mom probably tried to scan that damn thing. Yeah, that's definitely one thing we did mention in the last segment, that 112 people watched the Super Bowl. Uh, apparently, that's like the most watched television event of any kind in the, in the last five years. So, but still, 112 million people, that's a lot of people watching one thing. Um, or, or multiple things, right? <laughs> also fair, also fair. So, um, yeah, I agree with you uh, when it comes to the whole dot-com era. There was a lot of commercials back then about that. Um, and now you see a lot of car, uh, car commercials. As well, which I guess I kind of get it. Um, at that time of year, people it's tax time. People getting their money back. So why not go throw it as a down uh, payment on a new car? Um, and it's funny you mentioned uh, kind of a certain theme when it comes to the commercials. Um, the athletic mentioned some, and I thought I kind of agree with it. Um, a lot of those commercials were super serious and epic. That kind of went a little too long. Some were actually legitimately good that you might remember years later. You know, so forth and so forth. But a lot of them were very safe and boring and cheesy and not very funny. Um, and a lot of that, I'd say, were a lot of the, the, the stalwarts that we know of when it comes to these commercials, the Budweiser's, the, the Doritos, the Cheetos, all stuff like that. Um, or now, I guess you can say Facebook. It's just all those commercials are like, okay, do better. You know, I know you're paying, and especially since you're paying seven million bucks to have this ad for 30 seconds, double that if you're paying for a whole minute, you know. Do better, you know what I'm saying? Show me where that 14 million is going, cause you know, cause they, you know, and I don't know if it'll ever get better. So I almost feel like the commercials back in the day, and I hate to be that get off my lawn guy, but I think anybody who's been around for the last 20 years watching these commercials will agree that the commercials have definitely tailed off compared to you know years past. Hell, even five years ago, probably. But like I was saying before, I don't think any of these commercials are going to be in the pantheon of the greats of all time. What do you think about that, Terrence? The Pantheon. I mean, it's so fucking relative, man. That's Is it though? It's totally relative. Like, no one... Listen, no, no one is... Whatever the, the Pantheon is, you, you, either, you either feel a certain way about a, a certain brand or you don't. Like, nothing that any of these companies put on wax for 30 seconds or a minute or what have you, or online ad, is going to change the way you feel about these brands. Nothing that happened this past Sunday in terms of commercials is going to change the way you feel about a company. Good, bad, and different. 
Well, that's the case for any commercial, whether it's Super Bowl Sunday or not. No one's going to go out and buy a product because of the commercial. They're not. You might, you might not buy a product, but you will talk about it. <laughs> well, right, right. But what I'm saying, though, is, okay, it's, okay so just like, okay, so they have, they were advertising um, all these certain cars, the Doritos and Cheetos. I'm not going to go buy this stuff just because I saw it on Super Bowl. Oh, you know what? Let me go buy this stuff just because I saw it. You know, you're not doing that. Now, obviously, when they put these commercials out, it shouldn't be about getting the reaction right then and there. It just put, it's like kind of subliminal messaging a little bit. They're kind of putting it in your head right now. So when you are at the store, it's like, oh, I've never seen the commercial for that. Let me get, let me get some of that and try it. As opposed to not knowing what the kid is in the first place, you know? Uh, so that's really all, all it's what it's about. But what I'm saying is, Terrence, like, as far as iconic Super Bowl commercials, as far as the greatness of it, the Budweiser Frogs. Obviously, that was way back in 1995, you know, pushing 30 years ago, getting close to. And people still remember that. When I say Budweiser Frogs, if you were even old enough to even know what the hell's going on, you remember the Budweiser Frogs. Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan, you know, shooting it out for, for a Big Mac, you know, playing with a horse or whatever the hell it was. You know, that's legendary. That was 93, you know, for just for example, the E-Trade e Baby. They even tried, I think they even had a commercial um, this year with him being in retirement and trying to bring him back. You know, so, so just stuff like that, you know, those all, you know, I can keep going with the, all the list and stuff like that. But just for example, I'm just saying none of these commercials and I can't think of any in the last five years or even 10, maybe that can be thrown into that Pantheon. Like you mentioned of great Super Bowl commercials and you can tell I love the word Pantheon. So there you go. Yes, that can be a Jasonism. I guess I didn't make that up really. So, but you know what I mean? It's my word for the show. Just so you know. The definition of Pantheon is a group of particularly respected, famous, or important people. <laughs> Same thing. So, so about people for commercials. There you go. But, but, as you kept, but as you kept saying Pantheon, you know what I kept thinking about is the, the BMW commercial with Schwarzenegger and uh, Salma Hayek as gods. Which is also one of the dumbest commercials from this year. So thanks for bringing that up. Because like, like anyone's going to believe that all of a sudden... You know, Schwarzenegger and some of higher are going to be. Come on, get get out of here with that, bro. Same. Okay, it's speaking of which. Same thing with the whole Planet Fitness commercial. People were praising that Planet Fitness uh, Planet Fitness commercial, uh, commercial from this year because it had Lindsay Lohan in it and all these other celebrities. I'm like, okay. Number one, are you supposed to believe that any of these celebrities work out at Planet Fitness of all places? Get the out of here with that, bro. It doesn't. It bro. It really doesn't fucking matter. The the idea is to associate their brand with the idea of redemption and people kind of visualize fitness as like, Hey, here's a space you can actually like get your shit together. And listen, Lindsay Lohan, as far as celebs go, she has seen some shit. Okay. With all the so, problems she had plan fitness, is not going to help her get her stuff together. Okay. Let's stop. it. Okay. I, I, as someone who has a membership at plan of fitness, no, it's not changing people's lives, bro. Stop it. <laughs> at least not at least not from smoking crack and snorting coke, okay? It might help you lose some weight and get in shape, but yeah, yeah, if you're yeah, if you're a cokehead, sorry, but playing fitness ain't helping with that. Jesus Christ. I've seen cokeheads there. I've seen cokeheads there, literally, okay? Uh, is is that what you put on your survey? <laughs> hey man. Gotta let them know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I I look commercials are meant to be a representation of where they are in time. And so I think as we get older, much like many opinions are going to be had about the halftime show and their place in the pantheon of halftime shows, commercials are going to be the same way, dog. That's fair. But, but just so I can put it out there, if I had to pick any one of these commercials, that was my favorite one. Uh, uh, just so I can attempt to be positive here. Well, I mean, this may be the easy, easy way out, but the one with Peyton Manning, the Milkalo Ultra commercial, where he was in the bowling alley and people are out there bowling and, and Serena walks in and people all get all scared or whatnot. So I like that one. I like that one. So but do I get a little biased? Obviously, I'm not, I don't drink Michelob Ultra, obviously, but, you know. But still, it's a good commercial. I feel like any commercial involving Serena Williams is a good commercial. Well, 
Especially like, if she's trying to advertise the Sammy Sosa face whitening product. But um, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Sorry, I had to say that, bro. Sorry. Wow. He won't, he won't, he won't cuss, but he, but he will bring up the fact that the filtering was a little off in some of those picks. Anyways. Filtering? <laughs> What, what kind of camera Sammy Sosa got? That's a, that's a good filter right there. Um, I was going to say my favorite commercial, honestly, was the uh, Scar Joe and Kyle and Joe's joint with the Alexa joint. Um, where, hey, uh, if basically if uh, Alexa could actually like read minds. <laughs> And he, Scar Joe's bringing up some some event coming up, and and Kyle's Alexa is like, "Hey, be sure to fake your own death on this date." I, I like that. I like that commercial for a different reason, other than whatever the hell they were talking about in the commercial. It, it was a reminder of the fact that 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 even if that hey, if somebody like Colin Joe's can pull Scarlett Johansson, hey. Then you can get the girl of your dreams too, buddy. So go out there, you know, do, shoot your shot and go for it. So that, that's why that's why I like that commercial for a whole, totally different reason. So, Conjos, a plus for you, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Oh, we didn't even talk about the Sopranos joint. That was another electric car commercial, but the fact that, um. They had uh, Meadow and AJ Soprano in the electric car in the electric car for Chevy. Um, and really, all those car, all those commercials, that's all about nostalgia. So a lot of things were this, were about pushing nostalgia. So does that mean somebody should bring back Jared? Hope not. Dot dot dot. No, no, they should not. Respectfully. <laughs> I know no, you're yeah. just fucking around right now, but no, they should not. <laughs> yeah, talk about horrible commercials. <laughs> Business killer. Yeah. Remember Subway from five years ago? Well, <laughs> this is how they died. Hey, man. Brands get resurrected all the time. I guess so. But yeah, so uh, that's that was another year of commercials and another year of disappointment for myself. But of course, we're not watching for the Super Bowl or not watching for the commercials. It's more for the game. And one other thing we might might be talking about later. Yep. Well, that wraps up our Super Bowl ads segment. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the, the, this area of the Super Bowl experience that a lot of us really enjoyed, the halftime show. Coming up next on Cal Park Bros. <laughs> 